Hello, welcome back to our uh, Arturia CS8 TV tutorial. And today we're finishing off dealing with the oscillators. We've up until now talked about a single oscillator, dealt with the various waveforms it was capable of generating and the VCF that it can output. Now we're going to bring in the second oscillator and talk about the other features that the oscillators fundamentally have before we then start going on to look at some of the other components in the synth. So first things first, let's have a look at uh, some velocity controls. And there over here we've got these touch response sliders. So this slider here gives you uh, velocity sensitivity on your keyboard. So as things stand at the moment, if I press a note really, really quietly and really, really loud, give it exactly the same volume. If I increase this slider really quiet, really loud, that's your velocity sensitivity. Turn that down. This is your frequency sensitivity. So if I play a really quiet note, quite dull, uh, a really loud note, really sharp. So basically, the harder you hit this key, if you've got this slider turned up, it's like turning the attack level all the way to the maximum. So if I turn this slider down, that sound is like that sound. So I've just had to hit the key hard to get it to generate that tone. If I hit press it softly, I get a softer tone. So that's basically frequency sensitivity. The other two are the same, but for aftertouch. So I'm, I'm going to engage aftertouch now. No change. I'm going to engage aftertouch now. Get a volume increase. And then frequency is obviously going to be the same that we dealt with for hitting the key hard. So press the key. Now aftertouch. And it brightens the tone. In order to deal with the other buttons that we haven't looked at yet, we need to bring in the second oscillator into the fold. So everything that we've talked about in this row of buttons up here applies identically to the second oscillator below. In order to hear the second oscillator, we need the mix slider to be something other than all the way to one. So that's the sound of oscillator one. That's the sound of oscillator two. So now if we look at the two different oscillators, they've both got the square wave disengaged. So we're hearing a sawtooth. Uh, we've not got sine, but we do have different frequency settings on the sliders. Uh, oscillator two is generating a much brighter, sharper pitch. And there it is. We can mix those two together. So now we're getting a combination of that and that. If we press the sync button, you're only going to hear oscillator two, but it's going to be fed by oscillator one. So you get a hybrid kind of sound. The, the concept of syncing one oscillator with another means that uh, oscillator two is doing its thing but every time oscillator one gets to the end of its period, it refires oscillator two, so we get a different shape. The concept of syncing oscillators together is a pretty hefty subject in its own right, but the bottom line is you're only hearing oscillator two, oscillator one is kind of shut down. And it's used for generating more artificial uh, sounds because you, you're drawing waveforms that can't be drawn in the natural world. The link button disengages the filter and amplitude sections for oscillator two. It routes everything into oscillator one. So this has a reduced CPU load, but it also means if you want both oscillators to, to feed into the same filter bank, you can do it via this link button. So if we press, if we, so that's the mixed sound where we've got the original quite dull sound and then the really harsh sound and mix them both back together again and turn this on you'll lose some of that high frequency stuff and there it goes if we accentuate that by only listening to oscillator 2 there's the full brightness and that sounds the same as that because oscillator 2 which is 
but they're both generating sawtooth waves and all of the other settings are the same it's being fed into filter one so it's the same sound finally let's just deal with these two sliders down here brill and resonance these are uh, keyboard wide settings so if i turn the lpf on for both oscillators and set them to different values now got a really dull sound increases the frequency range for both oscillators at the same time and the resonance it's pretty intense and that'll do for that episode next time we'll deal with the sub oscillator the master sub oscillator we'll see how that joins into the mix thanks very much for watching see you next time